Hello and welcome back to The Note. Well, the worst start to a year in stock market history continues apace. In terms of the sparks that lit this fire, we had another fall in the Chinese stock market today. The Shanghai Composite is now below its low for last summer. Not a great sign. We also had resumed falls in the crude oil market. And in the case of WTI crude, it's now below $30 a barrel. Obviously, a big psychological breakthrough. But let's take a look more at the consequences and where we are likely to go next. This is what's happened to the FTSE All World Index. This includes all stock markets across the world, both developing and emerging. It's down some 17% from the top. It's at a two and a half year low. Very concerning, very close to a true bear market of 20% below its high. Now, when we take a look at the uh, stock market here in the States, I think the most important point is that earnings really could have been an opportunity for a revival. They have been in the past. but We've had a succession of companies that announced earnings that were better than the uh, prior expectations, like Intel, like Alcoa, like Citigroup and Wells Fargo, all of which have been rewarded with very sharp falls in their share price. The stock market is not interested in merely beating low expectations if companies can't make strong forecasts for the future. Now, another uh, development which is easy to miss amid everything else is if we take a look at currencies, emerging market foreign exchange as a whole has hit a new low for this cycle, particularly bad news for the ruble. But look at what's happening to the neighbors of, uh, of the US. Very dramatic fresh falls for both the Mexican peso and the Canadian dollar. Those really could have an impact on the economy here in the States. It really changes the terms of trade with direct neighbors. Obviously a big issue. Now, with earnings no longer being a catalyst, that means that the strength of the dollar and in general, the actions of the Fed become critical. If we take a look at this next chart, this shows you the uh, market measure, which you get by comparing inflation adjusted bonds with normal bonds, the market measure of expected inflation over the next 10 years. So the fall that we've seen in oil prices really shouldn't have any impact at all on where inflation is a decade from now. And you can see that it's now at its lowest since the great deflation scare of 2008. The sense that the Fed raising rates has squeezed uh, any chance of inflation out of the market is, is high. Obviously that combines with what's happened to the oil price. And that leads us to the critical development. In past episodes where you've had a big sell-off in stocks when there hasn't been a recession, generally speaking, the result has been that you've seen a bounce, but that bounce has come when the Fed, which has been raising rates, has decided to relent and cut them instead. Let's take a look. This is derived from the Fed Fund's futures market. This, according to the market, is the chance that the Fed raises rates at least two times by the end of this year, by December. So this includes the possibility that they could raise more than that. Uh, and you can see that it's absolutely tanked in the last few weeks. Basically, the current expectation is that there may be one rate rise in September, not earlier than that, and that will be it. The Fed is still officially steering the markets that there will be four rate rises this year. I suspect this is the critical new battle. The market is implicitly fighting the Fed and we're unlikely to see any significant rebound in stocks until the Fed at least starts to talk much more dovishly. Given that the Fed really doesn't want to backtrack immediately to admit that it made a mistake after such a controversial move that had been so widely discussed, this could be a very ugly little chapter in the relations between the Fed and the markets.